Amazing. Amazing. All right. As you do see, we have a microphone set up over there. Oh, Whatever nice. questions you may have for Paula, we kindly ask one question per person and no requests. We get that, right? Everyone good? All right. It is my absolute privilege to bring to the stage the absolutely iconic Paula Abdul! Yeah. So I kind of wanted to start by saying that I think you have the most fascinating Instagram. I love watching all of your videos and all of your dances. Thank What's you. been your favorite to film so far? Oh my goodness. I don't know, I love Halloween. So I love uh, doing TikToks with all the Halloween monsters. So I get Pennywise, I get Ghostface, I get Freddy Krueger. I get all of them over to my house and we dance in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't scare you at all, just hanging out with the Halloween monsters? No, I'm the only one that will go to those Halloween haunts and they can yeah. jump in front of me and I'm just like this. <laughs> <laughs> they try to scare me all the time. I'm, I, I guess I'm used to it. I feel like I need to go with you because you're brave and I'm a scary cat, so next time. Uh, but once again, thank you so much for being here. So I have a couple questions and then we'll throw it to the crowd. Um, I wanted to kind of ask about, um, one of the things I read is I saw that you were inspired by the film Singing in the Rain. So I wanted to know if you could tell us a little bit about what it is about that film that inspired you so much. Well, Singing in the Rain, starring the incomparable Gene Kelly, uh, changed my life. It's, it's a spark that ignited inside of me. And at four years old, I, I walked up to the TV set. I kissed the TV set. <laughs> and I said, that's my dad. And my father on the couch said, no, I'm your father, but that could be your TV dad. And um, I'm telling you, I, I, I kissed the TV set and I said, that's what I'm gonna do. And my parents told me that I never looked back. And then many, many years later, it was my mission to meet Mr. Kelly. And I had a song on my album, my first album that lent itself to a duet, a little song and dance I made up. And since he danced with an animated mouse, I figured I'd create an animated cat. And then the whole point was I already had six singles out and it was fear of oversaturation at radio. And my record label said, no, you cannot do this video. And I said, not as a single, but I want to give a gift to Gene Kelly. And there was a arguing back and forth and I spent my own money and did a pencil sketch test and then Virgin Records loved it. They became my partners and we finished it in color and they decided to release it as a seventh single. But for me, the best thing was I was able to finish it and give it as a gift to Mr. Kelly. And two days later, he invited me over for tea, my idol. And I spent the last two and a half years of his life meeting with him on a weekly basis. Wow. It's just, I'm telling you, this is my, my folks taught me, honey, if you walk in gratitude, miracles can happen. And I'm living proof that they did. Love it. Oh, that's so incredible. Uh, I wanted to ask about your little, uh, your, your like process when it came to choreography. So do you have a specific process? Like when you hear a song, is it something that you can come up with instantly? How does that work for you? Um, well, music is, is the grounding force uh, to create and be inspired to do movement. So you have to have some kind of music that drives that force. And I'll think of all different ideas. I dream a lot of choreography. So when I was in my teens, my father was sick and tired of me pounding on the floors. because so I'd wake up from a drunken slumber and I'd just start moving around. But he gave me a tripod and a video camera and a notepad. And I remember in the mornings I'd rewatch what I woke up and dreamt, but crazy, but there was some assemblage of what I was going to choreograph. That's so cool. Yeah. And obviously you've choreographed for so many people, including yourself, but do you have 
something that you consider to be like your magnum opus? Hmm, I don't think I've created it yet. Um, people think that, I don't know, some people don't even know that to this day that I still choreograph coming to America, the big African wedding scene. I didn't even tell Eddie and Arsenio, who were my friends, that I was even going to be doing the movie. So, and I asked John Landis, the director, not to say a word. So on the first day of principal photography of shooting that number, I just remember looking at Eddie and Arsenio's face, and they were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the Academy Awards was choreographing the Oscars was pretty cool. That's so cool. Well, what about? Um, I also read that you got to choreograph for the film Big. No, people get confused with that because I, at the same time that Big was filming, got to dance on a large piano. It was with Elton John. And when they were filming Big, when they got to that scene, um, I wasn't available to choreograph it, but I, I get credited for it, but I didn't do it. That's how amazing you are. They're just giving credit. I love it so much. So uh, like I said, we do have a microphone for whatever questions you guys have. Feel free to line up. Now is your opportunity to ask Paula. Uh, I also wanted to ask, oh, about your residency in, in Las Vegas, if you can tell us a little bit about that. It was a blast. You know, I'm used to being on tour, having to live out of the suitcase, but this was lovely being in one place and having people come from all over the world to one theater, and I had a blast. It was a, basically a two-hour show, and it was kind of the story of a musical of my life, basically. Um, and I got to tell lots of stories. And um, thank you all for those of you who did come out to see me. Thank you. And for those of you who didn't get to go see me, I'll be going back there. Right. And I'll be touring next year. You mean Rush Rush? Rush Rush, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting old too, so I get But who came up with rush. the concept for that? And um, like, how fun was it filming that video? Well, Rebel Without a Cause was one of my favorite movies. And there was this young upcoming, he had just done Bill and Ted's Excellent mm -hmm. Adventures. And I said, I have to have that guy to the lead. And it was Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun. That was one of my favorite songs to ever record, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Paula. I'm Rob, and I'm curious if there was a song you passed on that you wish you had it and somebody else made a monster. That's a good question. Uh, there's a list. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you believe in love was oh, for wow. me? Oh. And, Oh, I know. You stupid idiot, Paula. <laughs> I just didn't feel it was, it wasn't my song. It okay. was Cher's song. You know, that it just, it's, and, and Bayamos was written for me as well. Pass on that. That was a sheet, Paula. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but, you, can always, you can always do a cover, right? Of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you for asking. My pleasure. Thank you. What's your name? Hi, my name is Kelsey Edwards. I'm from South Carolina. I came all the way here to see you guys and everything. I am actually a professional dancer and choreographer myself. Woohoo! So, I just wanted to ask, what is your biggest piece of advice to really just shoot yourself out there even more? Uh, the coolest thing is when you're when you're beginning, and even after you begin and you start getting a little bit of success. Mm -hmm. The hardest thing is once you start getting success, you don't have that feeling of reckless abandon and just going for it. And that is the toughest, toughest thing to hold on to because it's, when you start becoming successful, you start feeling, I have everything to lose. And then you start holding back and then you're not giving your all. So I'm constantly fighting that because if you hang in there long enough, you're back to, what the hell do I have to lose? And it's the best feeling. So my, my advice is to go for it. Don't follow the norm. Create your own style. And I, I, K 
can't implore upon you more than to go on YouTube. You know, I didn't have YouTube. When I was choreographing, like for coming to America, I'd go to the library and study periodicals. Like there was nothing for me to physically see. But I really encourage young upcoming choreographers and performers to go back and study the greats before you who paved the way. Because everything old is new again. And if you study it, you can impose upon a new style that is all your, all your own, borrowed from the greats, and you create something that's your own style all over again. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it.